Hey guys, it's Ann. Welcome to the channel. Today is going to be a quick harvest of my continuous flow through system, the Vermibag Little Mammoth. So, this has been three months, can't believe it's been that long, since I um, last harvested this. Last time, I got out a lot of uh, leftovers and probably managed to get about 60% of the harvest uh, as finished castings and the rest was uh, had to go back in the top. So we're gonna take a look here and see what we can get this time. You can see there's a little bit, okay the bottom is super dry. Usually if you wait too long, then you basically are either have really dry stuff or really wet stuff from everything coming down. And it's pretty compacted. I don't have any uh, garden tools here in this part, of, you know, this is upstairs in the people part of the house. So I don't have any garden tools in here to help me dig through this. So this may take a And the harvest doesn't look a lot different than it did last time as far as coming to completion. You know, I'm still seeing quite a bit of paper and seeds. But I am going to try and get a good amount harvested this time, and maybe that'll make the difference. The idea is to get about one of these trays full every time I harvest and I'm going up to about here. Okay, that looks good for this side. Let me put the, the zipper back on this side and then move the other zipper over so we can do the other side. Let me move you over so you can see this side. Okay, so again this side's looking pretty compacted, which is what, you know, keeps it from falling down on me while I'm harvesting. So this side looks a little bit better. I'm going to get under this little flap here in the middle. Because it's such a wide system, it was necessary to have a wedge in the middle. So it is, unfortunately, one of the obstacles to getting this thing fully harvested. So it helps and it also hurts a little. If you guys have a vermi bag, let me know. You know, how does your harvest usually go with if you have a little mammoth or something, or a full-size mammoth? You know, how does that go when you're harvesting the center panel here. Okay, I think I'm right at that point where I'm pushing my luck. Let's get this closed up and then we'll see what we have achieved. All right, here we are with the harvest. And I suppose it does look better. Got to get rid of some of these tea bags. But there are things like avocado shell and mango pits, pumpkin seeds that just take longer than the you know, the three or four months that it takes for it to get to the bottom of the, the bin here. So um, this is going to probably, I'm going to have to sit here and play with this a little bit and break it up and then um, I'll come back in a little bit and we'll feed them up. All right, let's look in on these guys and get them fed. All right, so let's look under the blankie. And looks like we only have couple hangers on this time. Put that over there. Let's take a look. Now we just harvested this a few seconds ago for you guys and you can tell that it's fallen quite a bit. So while I'm doing the fluffing I'm also going to be trying to knock the uh, stuff that's already done down to the bottom. But first let's have a peek at these guys and see how they're doing. Oddly enough, the moisture feels really good over here in the middle. We haven't looked in on these guys for a month. Three months since the harvest and one month since they've been fed. But uh, I'll put it up atop, but gave them a massive feeding and quite a bit of bedding as well. 
So I don't know if we will see a worm bowl or not. But I did feed right down the middle and so if there was going to be a worm ball, it would have been right here. But look what amazing castings they've made. One month and they've turned all of that citrus, all of that fruit, um, I think there's even tortillas in here, and it's gone. It is gone, gone. The only thing left is the avocado pit. So I'm going to keep digging here, but I'm going to also knock things down to the bottom. So, kind of doing a weird thing here. Normally I just kind of give it a couple smacks, but I don't think that really settled it down as much as I would have wanted it to, which is why the bottom castings were quite dry. I'm going to put the old sticks and stems in the middle there, avocado pits, and then keep digging along the side here and make sure that everything does get completely down to the bottom. and that way the castings won't be super dry. One of my plants died, my ponytail palms. It's interesting. It, it almost looks like synthetic fiber, doesn't it? Interesting. All right, kind of move everything over on this side again. Trying not to knock down things to the bottom that are really new but yet trying to make sure that the bottom does have contact with the castings and not air. Luckily this is not as deep as an urban worm bag, so I am capable of, of reaching down there with my arm. I'm only 5'5", five five, and right now I'm kind of at my limit for being able to reach the full bottom of the bin. So I think that is full, no it's not. So I'm just going to keep digging in here. Hindsight's 2020. I wish I had a pole or a, you know like a real stick to knock this down. Note to self, get a broom handle or something to do this with. Your arms are not long enough. Well, it looks like we got a little worm ball from something. Seems like it might be a little bit of banana. Um, so yeah, let me try one more time to look underneath and see if it's full. It's not really. It feels full to me. That's as far as I can reach. All right, well, it's just going to have to do, isn't it? All right, now I've screwed up my middle. Oh, still found the worm ball. But they are going to get another huge feeding. Um, need to get in here more than once a month if we're going to catch a proper worm ball. I've got so many different bins going on now that... So these were uh, bits of trees from my bonsais. But it looks like we definitely need a huge feeding and a lot of bedding. So let's get to it. about two gallons of food. Looks like quite a bit of bananas. That might be rice. Um, avocado shells, onions, cabbage. Yep, can smell the cabbage. So that is a nice good feeding for them. I'm going to spread it out. One, so it doesn't heat up all in one place. And then two, because uh, we just, you know, took out so much of the bottom that I want to make sure that the moisture drips down evenly. So kind of give them a little sprinkle and let's get them some bedding. Now there's probably 10 pounds of African night crawlers in here and they do love to eat all their cardboard and paper, which is what this is. This is my prepared bedding. It's been sitting here for a month. Let me get them a little bit more. 
Since this bedding has been sitting for so long, I imagine they are going to eat it very quickly. So that's bit four big handfuls of bedding for these guys. I think last time we gave them about two gallons of food like we did today, and we did not give them quite as much of the bedding, and it was totally gone. So that's why I'm going a little bit heavier on the bedding today. Not to mention cabbage is stinky, and want to make sure that it's got a very good covering so that uh, anything doesn't want to get in here or hatch. So let me get their little blankie. Uh, this packing sheet has done a really good job of keeping the moisture in. This hole is actually for a gnat trap. Should it start getting a bunch of gnats, I can put my little mason jar there with the vinegar and then that will catch them. But for right now it's just a good place for them to get some air. And that is it. This Vermi bag has its own playlist, so I can link that at the end. Also, if you want to see the last video, I can link that as well. If you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.